Good morning, Farewell Project. A couple of things coming. Um, Going to be recording a live podcast on June 17th with um, Fawn Gerard and Dwayne Martin. Pretty excited for that. Make sure you guys that are interested in jumping in on that live recording because I think that's how we're going to do most of them moving forward. Um, you're interested in joining in on viewing the live recording and then getting being part of the, the question and answer portion of the podcast at the end. You have to sign up for that. So go to uh, the Barebell Project Facebook page, go to the event, click on ticket URL, and it's just a registration form. And that's, that's it's just the standard thing that we're going to do. Um, there's no limit to the amount of people, so you don't have to stay on. It's, you know, it's, it's entirely up to you, but I think you'll enjoy it. Um, let's see, we got that. We have our online tournaments going on and all that stuff. Um, excited for you guys that are starting. Things are opening back up. You get to shoot. Um, the reason... The reason for this live feed this morning, it's a little impromptu, but I'd like to do them a little bit more often now that my some, my school year is over. Uh, I still am checking out at school, but for the most part, you know, live feeds are going to come from my porch and from home. So, um, uh, is to do a little mental talk game today. Uh, I've been working extensively with Larry Wise, uh, USA Archie Level 4. Um, coach at the Olympic Training Center. He's my mentor coach. We've been working on um, some online training stuff, um, sort of refining the Barebell Project coaching program, extending it to compound and Olympic recurve. And um, so, you know, I've been doing a lot of working with him and talking mental game. And you guys notice, like, I've been um intermittently throwing out some stuff into the facebook group but uh maybe a week or two ago i threw out that carpe mom uh, momentum um little blurb and you know this morning and i'll, I'll, I'll i'm going to give you the full story this morning i'm participating in a, a metabolic reset program right now um it's a it's basically a weight loss thing eating real food not you know no cra nothing crazy it's just um, intermittent fasting is what it is. And there's, we have a group call like once a week or something, um, where everybody checks in and, you know, there's people from all walks of life in there, but there was this young, uh, not young, an older, um, woman struggling with her weight loss. And we're having this discussion and she was talking about, you know, she's every time she's hungry, she, she just wants to grab stuff and eat it and blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I said to her, which is something that I, or I said in our group chat in Zoom, which is the same thing I say to my shooters, kids, adults, myself, doesn't matter. Um, I said, what's in the title of this live feed? I said, you know, nothing worth pursuing comes without struggling first. And, you know, when we are in the middle of the suck whatever that is whether it's a practice session whether it's on the tournament line whether it's a an equipment failure um which i dealt with firsthand during indoor nationals last year you know that's the part of the um failure that can happen in order for you to ultimately enjoy um the positive side of that down the road um, and I, I, I wanted to bring it up here because the failure part is the training, the failure part or the suck embracing the suck, which you guys have heard me say before is, is the training. It is the ta bad target panic days. It is the, I just shot a, you know, missed the target, it, but you have to just not care about it and look at the bigger picture. Um, and that carpe momentum blurb that I had posted, you know, we sort of talk about self-talk and it's that talk it, think it, feel it, do it. When, when you're shooting bare bow, you, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's what bare bow is. Let's just face it. Even 
in your solo practice session, when you are by yourself, you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And, and not having a trigger, not having a clicker, not having a release aid, not having a draw check, not having all of those things is uncomfortable. At, it's, it's archery at its most basic form, it's an exclusion to maybe instinctive shooting. Um, you, your goal is to become comfortable letting the tip of the arrow float in the middle of the target. This morning I was practicing. I've started practicing pretty heavy. It sucks right now a little bit because uh, I was actually messaging with Grayson and John this morning. My calorie intake is really down from losing weight or being in part of this program. So I can only get like an hour's worth of shooting and that's it at 50 meters. Um, and, you know, I just, I get wiped out. And, but I noticed, you know, I noticed where, where, you know, my consistency just falls off. And I was thinking to myself, like, gosh, this sucks, you know, but I got to shoot because I have to get ready for outdoor nationals. And, you know, I, I thought about it and I was thinking back on the things. And then we had this call this morning. And I was like, you know, I think other bare bow shooters need to hear this. I think they need to know that when it comes to the mental game, what we are saying to ourselves in our head is directly going to affect what happens at the target downrange. And you need, you need to understand that like real crappy ends are going to happen. Crappy shots are going to happen. And every once in a while, a crappy shot's going to end up good. And even on those good landing arrows on a crappy shot, we can't be okay with them. We have to want to fix it. We have to want to move on to the next one. And that applies just the same as um, on a good end. If you throw three tens down at 18 meters or you shoot a 55, 56, 57 at 50 meters and you're all super pumped, you have to forget that end and move on because, because you can't become complacent and you can't expect it to happen. You have to, you have to make it happen on every end. Um, just, I've been doing a ton of um, kind of researching and writing and putting together um, more of a mental side of uh, my coaching with all of the stuff I've been doing with Larry Wise. And, you know, I can tell you that your frame of mind standing on the shooting line is the separator between the best, the average, and the not so good. Everyone has the ability to have the talent to shoot uh, high performing scores. Everyone, in my opinion, absolutely everyone. The only thing that's holding you back is your drive and your the, the ability to mentally put yourself in that moment on every arrow. Um, that's and that's that self talk. That's that's the and I'm gonna look back where um, where I'm gonna read it real quick on here. Uh, without a mental plan, when you step to the shooting line, you are giving you are running over. To, you're running a lottery in your mind. A lottery. It's a chance. Either you're gonna get it or you're not. In other words, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. You can do better. You have to plan. Um, and then that's where mantras come in. That's where keywords come in. Things that get you back on track. Uh, I know like all of my youth team, they have a word that for them is their mantra or it's their reminder to get back on track when they have a crappy end. Um, you know, for me, m my, my word that I use mentally is finish. Because I know if I finish the shot the way the feel of the finish is supposed to be, I know where it's going. Nothing is holding me back. Um, but I have to stay, I have to stay mentally into the shot from the beginning to the end. And that beginning, the conscious part of that is, is starts from the stance. And then that conscious part from the stance, you know, load the arrow, set my hook, set my grip in that order all the way through and you know you it's the moments where we forget or get complacent with doing all of those other little things that 
that's where we have the laps in in concentration that's where we have the errant arrows that's where we um separate ourselves from what our ability is as opposed to where we have the opportunity to shoot at our highest performance ever um it's mentally being into every arrow and you know i think with I, I think some of the reasons that this stuff is going through me is that um, I have lost a lot of weight, but I've realized that the same mental tenacity it takes to be disciplined in your diet and to be disciplined into the things that you're doing to improve yourself is the exact same mental mental state that you need to to hammer out 55 plus ends at 50 meters. It It's, you know... You also, in, in a turn, and, and you know, you kind of have to not care about the result of the arrow. That's, you cannot care where the arrow hits. You have to worry about everything that happens from the beginning of the shot, before the beginning of the shot, from the stance, to the finish of the shot. You have to have a mental awareness of how that feel is all the way through. And what happens is that ultimately you switch from a, a, a conscious... Um, concentration to a subconscious concentration um, once you separate the aim and begin to think about the release and it's it's not until we literally stop focusing on the value of the arrow will we will will you as a shooter reach that 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 moment in time it took me some time I mean I think I always knew it it was easier it came easier shooting compound and it came easier shooting olympic recurve but when it comes to bare bow i mean it just does not come easy and and for somebody for for a new shooter especially just because the struggle is real and the struggle with bare bow is part of the fun but if you have a competitive nature if your goal is to be a high-end competitor like you need to look at these things. You're not going to willy nilly be a 560 shooter. That just does not happen. Um, you can be a willy nilly 520 shooter. You could be, you know, but if your your mental game isn't on point, well then great, shoot for fun. Um, I'm just this is this is stuff that I'm looking at on the higher end. We're building. Um, Larry and I are, are building um, archery mental game courses classes. It's, um, it's, it's all, it's, it's going to be, it's literally like an educational two month class. And that class is built around, um, shooting form, but mental game. And I can't wait to share it with the people who signed up for our pilot program because, um, like the, some of the stuff that, that Larry has taught through the Olympic training center and through the junior dream team program and stuff like that has been, you know, he has been super influential in me, but, you know, it, all the basic principles of what he has researched and written about over the last, gosh, 40 years in archery. And if you, and for those of you who don't know who Larry Wise is, he's the head judge for the Lancaster Archery Classic. Um, he's, he's, he's the man who has been in between those podiums um, the, the platforms that you shoot on for since the inception of the tournament, um, you know, written multiple books um, on archery and mo just, I mean, years of research on the biomechanics of archery and the way the body's supposed to move and stuff like that. So um, I just, I wanted to share that little blur because I said that I repeated it in, in our group call you know, with that, with that lady that, that's struggling with her weight loss and, you know, you just, you have to stay the course on your shot from beginning to end. You, ha you know, and you have to realize is that every arrow that's a struggle is the, is it, it, it doesn't, those arrows, you need to embrace that and realize that you're not going to have success. You're not going to have the good feeling. You're not going to have the part of Baraboo that's worth pursuing without accepting and realizing that failure and the suck is part of the process. Um, you'll, you'll see me use the hashtag, trust the process. It's 
part of the process. You know, you don't have to be okay with it, but you have to accept it and move on. And, you know, that that happens in three arrow ends, six arrow ends, you know. And I think I saw Elton, um, I'm going to scroll down here quick. I think I saw Elton log on. Elton witnessed my struggle last year in indoor nationals, you know. And there is without a doubt, I was on a, I was on a, a pivot um, of just the bottom falling out or trying to keep my head in it. And, you know, I can tell you that, that I like, I was, I was there and then Elton was kind of the one like, dude, there's nothing you can do about it. Let's, you know, try to fix it, move on, and, you know, and it's, so it's timely Elton that you are on this call. Um, and we had the conversation, I mean, and, and you can, you could see the look in people's faces when they're on the shooting line, you could see it in, in body language, you can see it in, um, you know, just your overall presence on the shooting line, walking back and forth to targets, your demeanor while you're sitting back, you know, it's just self-talk, being positive and, and, and being, um, you know, in the moment of every moment is crucial to your success in the tournament, likewise in practice. If your attitude is crappy, there's a good chance that the rest of it's going to be too. Um, so you need to look at the reasons why that happens and, and why your attitude goes down the drains, and then you need to change that. So... I mean, I, I'll be honest with you guys. That's it. I just, uh, I felt um, that the thoughts were fresh in my head and I wanted to share it with everyone. I think that uh, you're going to see some pretty good content coming between um, Larry, myself, and, and uh, Dr. Richard McCune, who is 80 years old and is probably one of the most enthusiastic um, archery guys in all of archery i mean he he was trained by howard hill he is um, has introduced me and very good friends with byron ferguson um him and larry are like this and you know i i think it, bringing doc's medical profession uh profession side and larry's education and coaching side um i think you're going to see some really interesting and um, amazing mental game stuff coming from people who are actively, um, it, you know, competitive. And it's just, just wanted to share this little, that little thing today because it hit me pretty drastically talking to somebody else about a journey completely unrelated to archery. Um, but I found myself saying it and it's the same thing I use with the people I coach and like and especially the kids the kids oftentimes get down in the dumps and you know trying to teach a teenager or an 11 year old that you know if i say to 11 year old or 12 year old you know braces suck like they're not it's it's not going to register um but if you say to them like listen you know you got to get past this moment and then and move forward to find the good moment and create the good opportunity you know, you can, you can get there. And us as adults struggle, struggle from it as well. Uh, every once in a while, you just have to get back on that, back out, back on the horse and ride. So, all right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's just a quick one, but it'll stay up and, um, hope to do more of these throughout the summer. Now that, uh, the schedule's kind of, kind of, uh, mellowed out a little bit. Have a wonderful Friday, and don't forget, if you want to join in the live podcast, register uh, through the event page on our Facebook page. Peace.